choices. Yeah. <laughs> Sign it or don't. <laughs> All right, good evening. I've got 6.30. I'm going to call to order this meeting of the Columbus Common Council for April 16th, 2019. Uh, before we get started, <clears throat> I'm going to step away from that microphone. It's pretty hot. Um, I wanted to welcome uh, new members here. We have Katie Ryan here, who is a write-in candidate from District 1. Welcome. Thank you. We have Ed Johnson here, uh, District 3 representative. We also have Trina Reed returning for, is this your third term? Congratulations and welcome back. And I was uh, re-elected to another term as mayor. So uh, welcome to everybody. Uh, Pat, whenever you're ready, could you please take a roll call? Johnson? Here. Reed? Here. Ryan? Here. Tylen is excused. Tome? Here. Traxler? Here. All present. Thank you. If able, please stand for the Pledge of Allegiance. This meeting has been noticed in accordance with state statutes and local ordinances. Um, next item would be to approve the agenda. Let's wait till Pat gets back here so she can, Thanks. unless there's any alterations or deletions <clears throat> to the agenda. All right, Pat's I'll make back. a motion to approve the agenda. <clears throat> Second. We have a motion and a second to approve the agenda. Any discussion on that? If none, all those in favor, please say aye. 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 Any opposed? Agenda is approved. Correspondence and communications. I didn't see anyone signed up back there this evening. Uh, we did have one item in our packet, and that is the pro proclamation for the City of Columbus Arbor Day, uh, which is April 27, 2019. Uh, Patrick, I'll turn it over to you. <clears throat> Thank you, Mayor. Uh, I'm going to read the proclamation for us. Uh, I guess it's a little bit of practice because I'll be reading it at the Saturday event of Arbor Day. Um, just to remind the, the viewers and the public that uh, we will have our annual Arbor Day uh, festival on Saturday at Fireman's Park from 10 to 2. Lots of things going on there, so please come and check it out. The 27th, right? the 27th next Saturday. Yeah. Thank you, Matt. Okay, uh, the proclamation is the 2019 City of Columbus Arbor Day, April 27th. 2019, whereas in 1872, J. Sterling Morton proposed to the Nebraska Board of Agriculture that a special day be set aside for planting trees and, whereas this holiday called Arbor Day was first observed with the planting of more than a million trees in Nebraska and, whereas Arbor Day is now observed throughout the nation and the world and, whereas trees can reduce the erosion of our precious topsoil by wind and water, cut heating and cooling costs, moderate the temperature, clean the air, produce life-giving oxygen, and provide habitat for wildlife, and whereas trees are a renewable resource for giving us paper, wood for our homes, fuel for our fires, and countless other wood products, and whereas trees in Columbus increase property values, enhance the economic vitality of businesses er, business areas, and beautify our community, and wherever they are planted are a source of joy and spiritual renewal and whereas the City of Columbus observes Arbor Day in April each year in recognition of the importance of trees in the community. And whereas the City of Columbus has been recognized as a Tree City USA by the National Arbor Day Foundation. Now therefore, you, Michael Tome, Mayor of the City of Columbus, do hereby proclaim April 27, 2019 Arbor Day in the City of Columbus. Further, the 2019 Columbus Arbor Day celebration will take place on April 27 from 10 a.m. to 2 p.m. at the Pavilion and Fireman's Park, 1049 Park Avenue, with the tree ceremony held at 11 a.m. Further, all citizens are urged to support efforts to protect our trees and woodlands, to participate in planting trees and Arbor Day activities, and to support both governmental and school district environmental programs. I think you'll do fine on the 27th. Uh, all right, I'm ready to go. <laughs> yes. Unfortunately, the Arbor Day celebration is a tradition that I've had of going out into the woods and enjoying the uh, 
the trees uh, firsthand, so I won't be at that uh, celebration. I do believe there's going to be a prescription drug pickup and tree giveaways and other things. Electronics possibly. recycling. Electronics uh, recycling. Uh, so. Market, uh, craft fair, okay. music. Good. Yep. Great. Well, thanks to you and staff for organizing the event. I know it's been growing a little bit every year. So, Thank you. All right. Was there anyone else present this evening that did not get a chance to sign up for citizen comment that wished to speak? Seeing none, then we'll move on to the consent agenda. On the consent agenda, we have the council meeting minutes for the April 1st regular and committee of the whole meeting. Any questions on those meeting minutes? If there are none, I will take a motion to approve the consent agenda. <clears throat> motion to approve the consent agenda. Second. We have a motion and a second uh, to approve the consent agenda as presented. Any discussion on that? If none, all those in favor, please say aye. 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 Any opposed? <laughs> consent agenda is approved. On to new business number one. That is to take nominations and elect a city council president. <clears throat> uh, traditionally, we haven't really established a normal process. We can do whatever the council would like, but I think the best way to start the process is to take nominations. Let's open the floor to any nominations. I would like to uh, have as my first official council act be to nominate Andy Traxler as a uh, council president. All right, we have a nomination for Andy Traxler. Trina? Oh, I'm a second. I was going to also nominate. All right, we have two nominations for Andy Traxler. Are there any other nominations for council president? I would also like to nominate okay. Andy Traxler. I, I, think, I think we're probably pretty good there. Uh, let's see. <laughs> all right, unless there's any further nominations, um, all those in favor of... Uh, appointing Andy Traxler to be their council president for the second year or second term. Uh, please say aye. 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 Any opposed? Congratulations, Andy. Uh, thank you. I was just really glad I don't have to have Pat find my old name tag. <laughs> <So>. <laughs> I'm glad we didn't have to do a coin flip or anything because that's been done. <laughs> Congratulations, Andy. Nice. You can keep the keys to the, the jet and the, uh, the, uh, the secret island. <clears throat> <clears throat> All right, on to number two then. Consider and take action on a Class A alcohol license premises description change for Columbus Pick and Save. This was reviewed at the Committee of the Whole. I don't think there were any concerns. I personally really like the level of detail as far as the premises description and the changes they're asking for. Uh, we've got the premises description attached to the application and also a site plan. I don't have any concerns. Does anyone else have any questions or concerns about this? I did have a question. Yep. Um, I just know that when you're in the facility, um, they typically scan the IDs. Is that same process going to be followed in the parking lot? Just a. I don't know that we have a representative here, but I think legally, I mean, they're selling alcohol. They, that's not really part of the premises description. They're still going to have to do that on their end. I'm assuming if they're doing online sales, that's all going to be verified if you're paying for it ahead of time. Right. All right. Good question, though. Okay. Ed? I have a question. Uh, when the uh, period is, uh, because per the renewal application, it's 7119 to 63019. It doesn't seem like it's going to work real well. <laughs> and should the license requested type be filled out or not? But those seem like clerical errors, but caught my eye so is this um, supposed to be um, July 1st 18 through June 30th of 19 okay. what was the date Andy uh, June Sorry, July 1st of 18, ending in June 30th, 19. Okay. So they'll just be up for the regular renewal. Okay. And the license type for that, Pat? Oh, Class A. Class A. Class A liquor? Okay.
Any other questions from the council? The council prepared to approve that premises description change with those noted. Yeah, I'll make a motion to approve this um, Class A alcohol license uh, pr premises description change uh, with our uh, newly found edits of the date of being July 1st, 2018 through June 30th, 2019 and Class A beer and liquor. I'll second. All right, we have a motion and a second to approve the Class A alcohol license premises description change for Columbus Pick and Save with the notes recited by Andy. Any further discussion on that? If none, all those in favor, please say aye. 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 Any opposed? Aye. Motion passes, thank you. Number three, consider and take action on the CDBG closeout program. This again was discussed at the Committee of the Whole <clears throat> meeting uh, I believe the consensus was to go with option one uh, in the summary to close the CDBG close program and to do the uh, buyout of the receivables which is thirty six thousand six hundred and thirty dollars and forty one cents it was identified uh, that we could use uh, general reserve or undesignated funds to pay for that which would give greater flexibility uh, to the CDA to uh, revise a loan program and begin that sooner Trina, did you have a question? <clears throat> oh, uh, just a quick question. I hate to keep asking. Uh, approximately how much in funds would we then have control of if we do the buyout? I see the current closeout total. Is that the amount we would likely have control over for we, future loans? How do that is the amount that would be um, essentially held for us for two years for us to apply for. So that's what that total would be. So that $423,820.61 would be held for the city for two years. We would have to apply for it for a grant that would be um, eligible under the CDBG um, programs. Thank you. I was just looking over the eligible options and some of them were listing numbers like a maximum limit of three million, and I was assuming we yeah. didn't have access to. Uh, well, that, but that would be the the, uh, the total amount that you could get from that program. The total grant for those programs max out at three million. So obviously we wouldn't get there with our total. So. Mm -hmm. Yep. So by doing the buyout, we are increasing the grant amount for that project, and then also defederalizing that thirty six thousand dollars as those payments come back in which can be utilized for other things, uh, the CDA, hopefully. So good question, though. Ed? When would they be eligible um, for us to start making grant applications? Uh, as soon as we turn in our closeout paperwork. So we would have to fill out, there's an application form, and then we'd have to give them a check for our cash on hand. Uh, and then once that's accepted, theoretically, the next day, we could submit an application for that grant. So. Theoretically, we could say um, as soon as we submit it, this much money could be eligible for some of these eight projects in Correct. this fiscal Correct. year? Yes. Okay. Very good. In, or, or next fiscal year, but it, correct, in the upcoming two years. Cool. Thank you. Trina? Uh, sorry, one more question. Would we lose access to any grant options after two years? Yeah, we, we, that's the kind of the, the carrot to turn over our money is that we'd have two years to get, to get these funds. So we need to find a project, um, I shouldn't say we need to, we will find a project within two years to spend these funds. That won't be, I don't, that won't be hard. So we'll, we'll find a project. All right, thank you, Matt. Yep. Any further questions while Matt's up? I see none. Thank you, Matt. All right, unless there's any other questions, I'll entertain a motion to uh, take action to approve the CDBG closeout program, which would be buying the receivables um, in the amount of $36,630.41. So moved. Second. All right, we have a motion and a second to approve the CDBG closeout program. Any discussion on the motion? 
If none, could we please take a roll call on that one, Pat? Johnson? Aye. Reed? Aye. Ryan? Aye. Traxler? Aye. Unanimous. Thank you. Item number four, consider and take action on a monetary donation by the Merle Gunther family for the purpose of upgrading the electrical system at the Fireman's Park Pavilion. This was brought uh, to the Committee of the Whole uh, by Carolyn Fredericks from HLPC uh, to talk about these projects. Um, it looked like the um, preferred contractor or selected contractor out of three bids was uh, Power Plus Incorporated to do the electrical upgrades there. Um, I think what I, I asked Patrick to do is just to break these into two separate agenda items. So we are first uh, accepting the, the donation and then basically approving the contract award, just so it's a little bit cleaner. Does that make sense? Are there any questions? Carolyn is here. <clears throat> if there are no questions, I'll entertain any motion from the council. I will, uh, what's the first step you need to um, accept the donation? Yep, number four. <clears throat> I would move that we accept the donation uh, for the, uh, from the Gunther family for the electrical system at Fireman's Park Pavilion. Okay. Second. All right, we have a motion and a second to accept the monetary donation by the Merrill Gunther family for the purpose of upgrading the electrical system at the Fireman's Park Pavilion. Any discussion on that motion? If none, all those in favor, please say aye. 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 Any opposed? Motion passes. Thank you. Then it's companion number five. Consider and take action to award Power Plus with the contract to upgrade the electrical system at the Fireman's Park Pavilion. This is just basically approving that selected contractor. It looks like that was in the amount of $4,840. Carolyn's signifying that's correct. Any questions on this part of it? If there are no questions, I'll entertain a motion from the council to approve that. I'll make a motion to uh, award the uh, power to abort, award the contract of Power Plus uh, to upgrade the electrical system for the amount of four thousand eight hundred forty dollars. Second. I have a motion and a second to award Power Plus the contract to upgrade the electrical system at the Fireman's Park Pavilion. Any discussion on that? If none, all those in favor, please say aye. 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 Any opposed? Motion passes, thank you. Number six is, again, another two-step process. Uh, consider and take action on a monetary donation by the Merrill Gunther family for the purpose of funding a utility sink on the second floor uh, of the Fireman's Park Pavilion. Again, this first part would be accepting the donation, and then the companion number seven would be to award the contract to do the work. Uh, I did have one question just for clarification, um, and I'm sorry I didn't ask it at the Committee of the Whole, but I noticed in the notes it says, we chose the vintage style deep utility sink from readystore.com and I don't, just by looking at the information, it doesn't say which sink that is. Is it the one that's $1,305.48? Yes. Okay, all right. That is correct. Okay. Thank you, Carolyn. And then, um, go ahead, Ed, sorry. Who's gonna do the uh, re rebuilding the wood counter area and shelving that are in that? Um, we'll hire a contractor. HLPC will be paying for that on our own oh, just okay. to have it redone. So we'll be hiring a contractor and then we'll be coming back uh, with that. All right. I just if I can take a moment, I w I've attended a couple of HLPC meetings and I'm very impressed with the hard work that you and your commission do and the, the process that went into this. So I just want to give my uh, kudos to you for that. Well, thank you very much. Ed. One more question, Carolyn, sure. and two. Uh, is the Merle Gunther family going to be paying for the cost of the sink as well? Yes. Okay, all right. It just, the, the invoice that we have, or the estimate from um, Wright Plumbing is just for the installation. It says that uh, the owner would be supplying the sink and faucet, so I just wasn't sure if that was a cost that HLPC was gonna contribute to or, or if it was from this donor. So then the total donation would be $3,130.48 with the sink and the installation. That's correct. Okay, yep. thanks. Any questions while Kenner ends up? 
All right, thank you, Carolyn. You're welcome. Entertain any action from the council on this? <clears throat> I'll make a motion to uh, approve the monetary donation by the Merle Gunther family for the purpose of uh, funding a utility sink on the second floor of the Fireman's Park Pavilion. Second. All right, we have a motion to second to approve the donation of the sink and the installation on the second floor of the Fireman's Park Pavilion. Any discussion on that? If none, all those in favor, please say aye. 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 Any opposed? Motion passes. Thank you. Uh, then it's companion number seven is to take action to award the uh, contract to Wright Plumbing to install that utility sink on the second floor. Any questions on this one? If there are no questions, I'll entertain any motion from the council. I'll make a motion to approve award the contract to Wright Plumbing to install the utility sink at Fireman's Park Pavilion. Second. Motion a second to award Wright Plumbing the contract to install the utility sink on the second floor. Any discussion on that? If none, all those in favor, please say aye. 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 Any opposed? Motion passes. Thank you. Number eight, consider and take action on the Landscape Recycling Center project. Uh, Patrick has kind of refined this agenda item just to break it out into steps a little bit, which is very helpful. Uh, I think at the committee of the whole meeting and our ad hoc meeting, we had talked a little bit about this and didn't really have a whole lot of detail. Um, so I think this really helps, Patrick. Thank you. Um, this is just approving phase one, which would be the asbestos abatement in the old shelter, demolition of the old building, uh, purchase of concrete barriers, and installation of temporary signage for the Landscape Recycling Center. Does anyone have any questions on this? Or go ahead, Andy. Okay, I have a couple of questions. Um, we had we had talked about last time what exactly was going to be uh, demolished with that building. Was it just the roof, or are they starting with just the roof, or was it the entire building? The entire building. Okay. So be and that that's what had asbestos in it. There's. Or is that just in the roof? Strewn kind of without. I understand. Okay. Yeah. Okay. So we have a. A contractor ready to take care of that as the first step okay and is that that hasn't come in front of us yet right no okay <clears throat> and then uh, what's the plan now what, what are you gonna do with all the stuff that's already been dumped out there well we it's, it's the brush that's really that's the main stuff that's out there so we'll we'll have to kind of I think work on that maybe move it to the side until we do the grinding the first grinding but we'll as we discussed at the at the ad hoc we want to um, start to direct people to do the separation and, and you know get people used to how we're, we're gonna approach this going forward thanks Andy a question for you I guess now that if we're approving this are you looking to have more specifics come back to the council as far as these first steps like the asbestos abatement or the demolition or are you okay approving that right now without seeing a contract well that was I thought we'd have to see the contract before we took action on that or before they could start that process but Patrick what's your preference I guess I, I don't want to hold things up um, <clears throat> Well, I wanted just to get, you know, support for these actions, the first phases of the of the project. So okay. um, if you know, we can bring back the can bring back the specific agreement we have or the proposed agreement we have with the contractor. If we could bring it back to the regular meeting next time for a final You okay with that? Yep. All right. Okay. Trina, did you have a question? Oh, I had a question on the demolition portion of the building and uh, wondering if we could see a plan contract before the building is knocked down just to see if there's any extra issues beyond yeah. the asbestos that that's, might come up. That, that's, that's in the plans as well. It's just we're acknowledging the method for phase one, so then the details are coming back, you know, as we as we have that support now we we can know we can bring back the the nuts and bolts of it so to speak okay all right sounds good mm. all right unless there's any further questions then we will just have you bring that that contract back to the next regular meeting then just to kind of keep tabs on what's occurring 
uh, and then we can track the budget a little bit better for the project too overall so if there are no further questions I'll entertain any action from the council <clears throat> I'll make a motion to take action on phase to approve stay phase one of the um, recycle landscape center or landscape recycling center project Second. I have a motion and a second to uh, approve uh, the beginning phase one steps for the landscape Recy recycling center project. Any discussion on the motion? If none, could we please take a roll call on that, Pat? Reed? Aye. Ryan? Aye. <clears throat> Traxler? Aye. Johnson? Aye. Unanimous. Thank you. Number nine, uh, consider and take action to accept appliances, TVs, white goods. Uh, at DPW Recycling Center for 2019 on three separate dates, which would be May 18th, May 20th, and October 19th. We discussed this at the Committee of the Whole as well. Is everyone clear, have an understanding of what's going to be occurring here? Ed? No. Okay. Uh, <laughs> I get the three times. Okay. I count a total of six times that people can get rid of electronics and or appliances. Is that accurate? If you add in Arbor Day and then the two curbside cleanups? You're, you're right about that. Um, okay. This is addressing just kind of our regular. So what we used to do is a, a, a nonstop program, and right. we're trying to, to uh, uh, narrow that right. focus to keep it neater and cleaner. Sure. Yeah. So three opportunities there. Right. Arbor Day. And then two curbside cleanups. Right, and those would be we'll we'll educate and, and promote those on their own. Okay, I see you might be offered some assistance here. Oh, also, okay. <clears throat> um, I do want to mention that the two pickup days that are being done by Columbia County, they do not accept TVs and appliances and the white goods okay. on those pickup days. Okay. That I did clarify was Columbia County. Okay, because so, it says we'll also provide the electronics recycling opportunity for residents as well as the first of two curbside cleanups. But that means excluding electronics and white goods. Yes, All I right. did clarify that was Columbia County. Okay. So it would be so the, Arbor Day and then the three, three days so at the recycling of, center. Total of four. Correct. And on Arbor Day, do they pay the proposed $30 fee also? Yes. All right, very good. Thank you. Good question, Ed. That was on my, my list as well. Thanks for clarifying that. Andy? So I, I have another question. Um, in the memo, in the packet, it says, uh, to try and continue that system, dumpster was placed at DPW for residents to drop off appliances at a $15 cost or to have DPW collect items curbside for $30. Uh, is, are you still offering the curbside pickup for $30? We're, we're trying to we're trying to get rid of yeah that okay. we want to institute this this new approach okay. to it the uh, wording was a little confusing okay all right thank you well, one other thing just to clarify as well is the agenda item says um, to accept those items at the DPW slash recycling center from my understanding of the discussion at the last meeting and the information here it sounds like these three dates would be probably at the recycling center that's what we wanted to do okay yeah. so yeah. then so dpw the we don't want people bringing that. that to dpw yeah. okay all right just to be clear all right I have Ed. one more question after uh what andy mentioned so there will be no curbside pickup of these appliances so in the past people have been able to get them out of their house and onto the curb and have them picked up now it'll be up to them to get them to the recycling center is that okay yes yeah. so completely up to them all right it's, it seems like a big change and hope people are aware of it trina oh no i just had the same question as ed um for how are people to get their items to um the center on these dates without any pickup option even if Will there be something for a uh, larger fine available to have a pickup come on those dates? Just wondering if that might be an option. Andy. 
I also don't want to eliminate the curbside pickup. I want that as still as an option. You know, maybe the cost should be a little higher. There's more, more labor intensive. But I don't necessarily want to get rid of that. There are people in the city who don't have trucks big enough to bring a big TV or a washer or dryer down there. And uh, taking away that service is really a disservice. Well, I, we haven't been presented any information here, but I guess I would ask Carolyn how much that service was used. How many pickups were we doing? you know, on an average over the past couple of years as far as coming to the property and picking up an item? Um, as far as an average, uh, you know, it really just depends on the resident, but I would say it certainly is a service that is used by our residents. I think I'd kind of agree. I'd hate to see that service gone completely because there are a lot of elderly residents or people who do not have trucks or trailers or a way to get it down to the center. So. I, I would say it would definitely be worth keeping the curbside. Typically how that worked, um, you know, it, the, if they brought it down to Public Works, you know, it was one set price, and that was for white goods, TVs, um, couches, any of that kind of stuff. And then to do the curbside pickup, meaning we would have to use our Public Works equipment and our manpower to go get it and then bring it back, it was doubled the amount, you know, so there were definitely be a higher cost on the curbside pickup, but a lot of residents did like that option as well. Okay. Thanks, Carolyn. Well, I think there's a lot of other things to consider with this conversation. Um, if, if the council decides they want to continue that curbside pickup, because are you going to have curbside pickup for three days out of the year? Or are you going to be doing it every day? And if you're not doing it just those three days, you're going to be storing those items somewhere. Um, I think those are discussions we need to have. <clears throat> I think this uh, storing white goods um, is different than storing televisions. I think there's maybe a larger conversation we need to have about that. Andy? Yeah, I was actually going to say, I mean, in, <clears throat> in the in the proposal here, and it's not asking us to eliminate that. So it's just asking us to offer three dates for those pickups. So I think um, we should uh, take action on what's being presented and also then discuss uh, to, just to make sure that we are going to still offer this service and how we can offer it. Sure. So uh, with that said, I'll make a motion um, to I'm gonna read this right. Uh, to uh, accept appliances at the recycling center uh, for 2019 on three dates uh, as listed May 18th, July 20th, and October 19th. I'll second the motion. All right, we have a motion and a second to accept the appliances, TVs, white goods at the recycling center for those three dates. Uh, any discussion on that motion? If none, all those in favor, please say aye. 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 Any opposed? All right, and if we could maybe uh, bring a committee of the whole discussion back to kind of finish off those details. Yeah, appreciate the, the input. Okay. Thank you. Mm. All right, number 10, consider and take action on proposed disposable assets from the senior center. Uh, this is going through the asset disposal process. There is a list of items that the senior center uh, would like to donate or auction off or get rid of. So they're going through the process and the beginning of that process is submitting a list of those items to the city council. It didn't seem like there was a whole lot of uh, questions from the council at the committee of the whole. If anyone's looking for a uh, used piano or organ, here you go, here's your chance. Any questions from the council on this? If there are no questions, I'll entertain any action from the council. I'll make a motion to approve the proposed disposal asset list from the senior center. Second. All right, we have a motion and a second to approve the proposed or the disposable assets from the senior center. Any discussion on the motion? If none, all those in favor, please say aye. 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 Any opposed? Motion passes. Number 11, consider and take action on applications for operators licenses uh, for July 1st, 2018 to June 30th, 2020. We did have a updated list at our desks this evening. Uh, with some additional names. So the current list should be Melissa A. Parker, Lori A. Brown, Joseph R. Leonard, Rebecca McGee was added, and Gwendolyn Carlson was added. Any questions on this? If there are no questions, I'll entertain any action from the council. <clears throat> <coughs> All 
I'll make a motion to approve the oper new operator licenses for July 1st, 2018 through June 30th of 2020. For the names as read by Mayor Tone. I'll second. I have a motion to second to approve the five operators licenses as read. Any discussion on that? All those in favor, please say aye. 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 Any opposed? Operators licenses have been approved. Thank you. Number 12 then is consider and take action on uh, claims in the amount of $358,450.90. Are there any questions on the city claims? If there are no questions, I'll entertain any action from the council. <clears throat> Make a motion to approve the, the uh, claims in the amount read. Second. I have a motion and a second to approve the city claims in the amount read. Any discussion on that? If there's no discussion, Pat, could you please take a roll call? Ryan? <clears throat> Aye. Traxler? Aye. Johnson? Aye. Reed? Aye. Unanimous. Thank you. On to report of city officers. Patrick, I'll turn it over to you. Okay. Uh, a couple things to report. Uh, 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 work continues uh, to prepare for the opening of the municipal court. Uh, uh, the judge elect is uh, reviewing candidates for the clerk's position and uh, thinking that'll be addressed uh, very imminently uh, we had the court administrator from the state coming to review our space and uh, the office there and uh, that uh, that went favorably everything's good we got a couple of things uh, we need to, to clear yet but um, all is good uh, from Teresa at the state and um, the the next steps then is just preparing the the office and uh, getting everything set for May 1st. So uh, the other thing I wanted to share is Thursday night, uh, there's a meeting at the community building. Uh, the DOT is putting up uh, for work that is uh, scheduled for just a, in a couple of weeks. It's surface work on Highway 151 around Columbus. So um, I went to the pre-construction meeting yesterday and uh, while there may be some, you know, going from the four to two lanes, maybe a little bit of extra time involved and some some disruption, um, it's it's necessary work. It's a continuation of some of the work along 151 that they've been doing over the past couple of years. But uh, if anybody is interested and has questions, uh, the meeting's at 5:30 on Thursday at the, at the community building. That's all I have, Mayor. All right. Thank you, Patrick. Oh, I had a few things, uh, kind of a last minute reminder um, for the uh, Roadmap 2050 online survey. Uh, that is still on the city website. Um, I'm not certain of the date when that's going to end, but I think it's going to be fairly soon. So uh, if, if you've not yet taken the survey, um, set aside about 20 minutes, maybe 30 minutes, take your time and get through it. But um, we want to be sure to be, get everyone's feedback uh, on that survey. Um, I sat with uh, Clerk Gable last week and we went over the uh, boards, committees, and commissions and tried to clean that up a little bit. Uh, the current vacancies that we have right now, from my understanding anyway, that there's a vacancy on the uh, Board of Review currently, uh, the CAAC Advisory Board, the Cable Commission, uh, the CDA, which is the Community Development Authority, <clears throat> the Plan Commission, the Senior Citizen Advisory Board, the Tourism Commission, and the Zoning Board of Appeals. Those all have a current vacancy right now. Uh, we have two vacancies on the Parks, Park and Recreation Advisory Board, uh, Police and Fire Commission, and then also uh, the current Municipal Court Ad Hoc Committee is going to expire 90 days after the court begins. Uh, so those seats will all need to be reappointed at that time as well. So there's plenty of opportunity for anybody that wants to be uh, involved in city government. Um, I think we're going to try to make an effort to get this out on the city website to encourage people that are interested. Uh, but if anyone needs any information about these specific boards and what they do, I'm happy to connect you to the resources that you'd need to find out more about those. So, um, And then uh, 
Lastly, I did want to again congratulate Katie and Ed. Um, I, uh, Ed, I know you were out knocking on doors. I uh, met you on my porch twice. So I know that even though you're running an unco uncontested election, I think that it's very nice that you were out meeting people and talking to them. That's, I think, uh, a benefit to you as you serve here, that you've talked to people. So again, thank you and welcome. And uh, Katie, I think your decision to run as a write-in candidate as opposed to just being appointed shows that you have a, a level of commitment. And um, I appreciate you uh, putting yourself through that. Not, not many people do that. So um, Trina, you've put in <laughs> quite a bit of time here and thank you for deciding to do another uh, two years on the council. I definitely appreciate that commitment. Um, I definitely appreciate the support I've received from the community just in getting on the ballot and also uh, running an un uncontested election. I feel like it didn't really take any time to campaign or <laughs> talk to the community because I've just been busy being the mayor. Uh, and there's been no vacation since my election and this meeting. I, I'm, I've been keeping busy. So uh, I definitely am grateful to, to be in the position to serve the community for another two years. Um, I think we've, we've accomplished a lot, in, a lot in the last few years. And, and I want the new members to know that if you need any help or assistance, we're here to help you. I want you to be successful. City staff wants you to be successful. And we want to get you to the resources that, that you need to make informed decisions. So I'm looking forward to working with all of you. Thank you. Did anyone up here want to say anything? Me. You sure, Ed? You look like... <laughs> <laughs> I'm sorry I bothered you twice. <laughs> uh, 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 no, thank you, Mayor. Uh, you've been very helpful and supportive, and uh, I'm very much looking forward to serving on the council. Uh, it, I, it'll be great fun. So, thank great. you. Thank you. Forgot to and congratulations. Congratulate, congratulate Andy on his... Yes. Second year as council president, I think you, you've done a good job. You've been a good communicator, and I appreciate you willing to, you know, to do it for another year. So well, I appreciate that. Thank you, and that's what I was going to say. Just thank you guys for your support uh, and giving me another shot uh, to run this next meeting uh, for another year. So <laughs> <laughs> you know, I appreciate it, and I uh, look forward to working with the new members and, and uh, the same mayor and Trina. So. And Jason, he's he's just not here. So thanks to everybody, and we'll we'll get started on the next meeting soon. All right, thanks. Unless there's anything else, I'll take a motion to adjourn. Motion to adjourn. Second. I have a motion and a second to adjourn. All those in favor, please say aye. 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 Any opposed? We stand adjourned for a few minutes and return with the committee of the whole. Thank you.